Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Dear future Jason, in case you ever get so goddamn hungover that your memory gets completely wiped, please watch this really informative speed run on how to shoot medium format film. So you've already mastered the 35mm format and you're ready to accept eternal medium format vibes in exchange for total crushing financial bankruptcy. Good. We're on the same page. Take everything you know about 35mm and flush it down the turlet like a huge turd. Actually wait, keep some of the information, like the exposure triangle. That's still the same. Medium format film is different than 35mm film. For starters, it's often referred to as 120 film. You can call it 120mm film if you really want to, but you shouldn't because technically you're wrong and someone might punch you in the throat. Medium format is more expensive. There are less film stocks available and the lenses are generally slower. However, medium format film is quite a bit larger than 35mm. The rolls look like this. Because it's bigger, we get more image definition and the mythical medium format look. What is the medium format look? It's basically just high image quality paired with a thinner depth of field. Awesome, now you know one of the biggest secrets of the universe. 35 millimeter film cameras produce pretty much the same image size across the board. However, with 120 film, we are introduced to several different formats and guess what, you have to pick one. Choose wisely, whichever one you pick will determine what gang you get initiated in. Worry not though, I'll be your guide on this journey, which you may later come to regret, but fuck it, let's do it anyway. For beginners, we'll just focus on three of the most popular formats for 120. In order of small to largest, 6x5, 6x6, and 6x7. But there's also 6x8, 6x9, 6x12, 6x17, and for some unholy reason, 6x24. Let's not worry about them for now. Let's start with probably the most popular format, 6x5. 6x5 refers to the 6cm by 4.5cm image and is by far the most economical format for 120 because it yields 16 shots per roll, which if you think that isn't actually that much, you might want to sit down for the rest of this video because it only gets worse. 6x5 is often referred to as the 35mm of 120. Probably because it's the smallest format, and some people claim you don't see much of the medium format look with it. But maybe it's worth it to you to sacrifice a little bit of the look for more shots per roll. I mean, I don't know what your standards are. But we're not talking about large format today. You may notice that 645 lenses and medium format lenses in general are longer focal lengths than 35mm lenses. This is where the fun begins. For medium format, each focal length is actually informed by the format size. For example, an 80mm lens on 645 will not have the same viewing angle as an 80mm lens on 6x7. I know this concept is a bit tough unravel, but don't worry, I'll try to help you figure this shit out, which actually should make you worry more. If you're accustomed to full frame or 35mm and would like to get a sense of what these medium format lenses translate to if they were scaled down to full frame 35, all you have to do is multiply the lens focal length by 0.62. For example, an 80mm lens on 645 is equivalent to roughly a 50mm field of view in terms of full frame 35mm. Here are some solid options to look into for 645 cameras depending on your budget. Next up in size we have 6x6, in which the image is 6cm by 6cm. Starting to see a trend here. 6x6 is a perfectly square format. Some people love this format, and you might too, for reasons I may never come to understand. With 6x6, your roll of 120 will actually yield 12 shots, and you won't ever have to turn the camera sideways for portrait orientation. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, all your shots will look like album covers. Because the format is larger overall, an 80mm lens on 6x6 is equivalent to a 44mm lens on full frame 35. Just multiply your focal length by 0.55 to get an idea of what you're working with. If you're considering 6x6, here's an array of cameras that shoot that format. Lastly, we have probably the most desired format, which also means the most expensive, 6x7. 6 cm by 7 cm is quite large. Your roll of 120 will yield 10 photos, or 9.5 if you have a cursed Pentax 6x7 camera like mine. I personally think 6x7 is where you see the medium format look shine, and that's why I have four 6x7 cameras, instead of probably a house and a family that loves me. A quick way to understand what full frame or 35mm field of view equivalent you're working with on 6x7 is to just have the focal length of your lens. So for example, an 80 mm millimeter on 6x7 will give you an equivalent field of view to a 40 millimeter lens on full frame 35. Here are some good options for the 6x7 format. As I touched on earlier, there are also larger, less common formats like 6x9 and 6x17, aka the long boy. 6x9 yields 8 photos a roll, but gives you a massive image that's unlike anything else, especially if you shoot color positive film. 6x17 is hella panoramic, my dude. I think you get 4 shots on a roll or something like that. Great, so now you understand format and you've selected your starter camera. Ah, I wish I could see you now, brimming with the endless possibility of what you'll shoot first. All right, well, let's stop f***ing around and load our sh already. Some medium format cameras have film doors similar to 35 millimeter. However, the difference is when you're done shooting 35 millimeter, you rewind the film back into the cartridge. 120 film had to go and want to be different. 120 film actually gets wound onto another spool as you advance your film. That means you need an empty 120 spool to start with. Typically, your camera will come with one, and if it doesn't, you're totally and utterly f***ed. Just kidding, order one off eBay. They're cheap. Some cameras can also shoot this thing called 220, which is basically a dead format nowadays. If there's a switch on your camera, make sure it's set to 120. Okay, let's go ahead and start by transferring that spool over 
to the take up side by releasing the bottom lugs. Now with your actual roll of 120, go ahead and cut the tape holding it together, but be sure to firmly grasp it so the roll doesn't unravel. Place the roll in the empty side of the camera and close the bottom lugs. Pull the film across the take up spool and feed it into the slot. Use your film advance lever to make sure it's caught and advance your roll until you line up the arrows. It is very important for you to line up your arrows, otherwise your film will catch fire. No it won't, but you'll likely get half a roll of shots if you don't. Cool, that was easy. Now you can close your back door and advance your film until you see the number one in the frame counter window. If you don't know what the number one looks like, you've got bigger issues there pal. Now just follow the exposure rules you learned in my previous video entitled How to Shoot 35mm Film, A Star Wars Story, until your roll or your energy is drained, whichever comes first. When you're done shooting your shot, Give the film advance a couple winds to make sure the roll is transferred completely onto the take up spool. We don't want to open the back and see the backing paper. That's no bueno. When you open the back of your camera, you should see a lone roll of film now on the take up side. Go ahead and pop those lugs, withdraw your roll, and seal the roll with an overly sexual lick of the paper tab. However, with 120 film, we're also introduced to a new concept the film back. Don't be scared. It's just an alternative way to load your film, and only some cameras use it. Okay, you can be a little scared. I have a Hasselblad back here, but in general, it's pretty similar for other systems. Turn the notch to withdraw your spool system out the back. Flip the tab open to transfer the empty spool to the other side. Lock your new roll in and pull out some of the roll, making sure that the black side of the paper is facing out. Typically, there is a clip on the pressure plate you need to slide your film through and then insert the paper into the take-up spool on the other side. Again, look for the starter arrow and wind your film until the arrows line up. Slam that bad boy back in the film compartment. Lock it up and forget about it. Okay, well, maybe don't totally forget about it. Just don't remove the dark slide until you're ready to shoot, unless you love chaos and literally don't give a shit about money. Use the winder on the side to advance your film until you reach frame one. When you're done shooting, it's the same thing. Give the winder some extra spins to make sure your film has successfully transferred onto the take-up spool, and once again withdraw the film compartment, making sure this time to go way overboard and very sexually lick the film tab, because you're a dirty boy who is so enthusiastic about film backs. I'm not going to sit here for all eternity and teach you how to load every medium format camera ever built. That's Nico's job, but hopefully this gives you a good general sense of how it's accomplished. Most labs are able to develop 120 film, no problemo. If they don't, they are weak, and they will not withstand the test of time in this ever-changing capitalistic hellscape. The labs I trust are the dark room, hidden light, and if you're local to LA, Sammy's camera. Congrats, you just completed the second course in my How to Spend All Your Money on Old Dwindling Technology series. Join me next time as we unravel the mysteries of large format and how that will surely cause you to default your bank account. But before we go, I'd like to quickly thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform, but that's not all it can do. If you're a creator, like me, looking to get your vision out into the world and build an audience, Squarespace makes that possible in any number of ways. A great way to connect with your audience is member areas on your website, which you can strategically use to create membership-only content and unlock an extra revenue stream. If you're a photographer like me and interested in selling your prints, Squarespace has the ability to help you open up shop and manage tasks like managing low inventory, as well as discount codes. You can even link up third-party print-on-demand services to your website site to ease the work on the back end. Building an online photography portfolio and store has never been easier. I've been using Squarespace to host my own portfolio for a couple years now and it's been incredibly easy to add new work or make room for the old work at a moment's notice. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash granny days. And if you use the code granny days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. And yeah, I haven't forgotten. Kodak, please bring back Aerochrome.